Please ignore the space heater in the background. I'm afraid it's a little bit loud down here, but it's also quite cold down here. It's very looking like it's going to snow outside. So I have the space heater on here in the sewing room slash studio where I am, uh, you know, normally making things. But today I was supposed to make a big circle skirt, which I'm hoping to still get to later. But I got distracted because I'm just really excited to start this Star Wars set project. And so I kind of just was really inspired to get working on that today. So I went shopping for some materials to get started on that project. And I thought I would do a little bit of a Home Depot and Michael's haul for you all. So let me show you what I picked up at the Home Depot. All today. right, so I've got a few different things here. The, oh, I should show you what I'm planning on making, or hold on. So over here on my computer, we can see these uh, interactive panels that they have throughout Star Wars Galaxy's Edge at Disneyland. They have these like door panels. They look very similar to the control panels or door panels that are beside most doors <laughs> and uh, all along the ships and different places in Star Wars. And so I'm hoping to make a couple of these panels to be beside the doorway that I'm gonna have on my background, background backdrop set that I'm making. So I wanted to make a couple of these panels. I'm gonna make them possibly so that they like Velcro into place um, or like are set into place so that I can get behind them because uh, I don't know how I'm gonna make them light up yet. I don't know if I wanna do LEDs, like some sort of a, Christmas light situation back there, or um, even maybe possibly just putting glow sticks back there because I don't need this to work all the time. I just need it to, to work for the day I'm filming. So um, I'm possibly going to just make this so I can put glow sticks back there and then that will glow through. We'll see. Um, I didn't find like plexiglass squares, so I did buy a sheet of plexiglass that I can hopefully cut into squares. We'll see. Basically, I'm gonna try and create things look kind of like this. Obviously, mine aren't gonna be this detailed because we're never gonna get this close to them um, on set. Obviously, I'll be filming from kind of far away for my doing my outfit lookbook style video, so I don't have to make them look super perfect, but I went shopping today to get stuff to make something similar to this. Now, I tried to find styrene, which if you are, if you are as nerdy as I am and you also are a big fan of like watching model making and um, like prop making and stuff like that. Um, sheets of styrene are like a product that can be used to make modeling models and things like that. And I thought it would be a good idea to use it for this project, but I couldn't find it in any craft store locally. I would have to go to a special hobby craft place or order online. So I decided to just go with foam core for making the first one of these. I'm kind of making this almost as a trial run. Like if it works out and it will work, then great. If not, then I will upgrade to more standard model making materials, but I have a sheet of foam core here. I have this little fitting because I went greebly shopping. Um, those of you who are familiar with Star Wars and watch anything about the props or um, things like that for Star Wars know what a greebly is. A greebly is just a, you know, uh, a thing, a little goober that gets glued onto ships, places, <laughs> uh, models to make it look more interesting, to give it some sort of like depth and, you know, who knows what these vents would be for or whatever. Um, this is actually for an electrical box, but I thought spray painted gray or silver, that would make a great greebly. So I kind of just walked all around Home Depot today looking for things. And I, I, I figured, you know, I could start layering these. This almost looks kind of like the place, the sockets that the droids hook into in Star Wars. So I got one of these little pipe fittings and I got these guys but I thought I would layer this to make it look even more like a little droid fitting. So I'm gonna use those. I kind of just, if something was inexpensive and looked like it would make a good greebly, I picked it up. Um, these, for example, I don't know what the heck these are actually used for, but I just thought, oh, that's a good like random greebly. You could glue that on anything and add a lot of interest. Um, these ones are like little mini corrugated like tiles I thought were good. I got some nuts to use to make it look like things are bolted into place. Again, these are just more drain fittings, but again, I thought like mounted on the wall, you know, for draining, I don't know, liquid nitrogen or whatever the heck is draining out of a Star Wars East place. I got a new X-Acto knife and some blades over at the Michaels. And I also got some tacky glue. I got metallic silver Rust-Oleum paint. I got a couple of craft acrylic paints to have on hand. I got some, um, what is this called? Liquid cement. I got metallic tape. I think this is like foil tape. 
Um, and I thought that might be coming in handy for when I need something that's like a super metallic finish. Um, I've got a sheet of plexiglass, like I said, to hopefully cut into squares to make little square tile buttony things out of. Um, we'll see how that goes. Just kind of experimenting here. I'm not really a model maker. I'm a seamstress, as we know, normally. I also got these vents, which are like air vents for HVAC systems, I assume. But I thought painted black and then on the wall with like lots of like rust stains coming down from them, that those would be good. Set into the wall. Um, I got a mask because I am going to be doing some sanding of insulation foam and I didn't want to breathe in those particles. So I just got a mask while I was at Home Depot this time. Um, I also got a couple of sheets of different scrapbooking papers while I was at Michael's. So this is a like brushed silver finish scrapbooking paper. This one is a shiny black finish that looks like, you know, a painted enamel or something. Um, so if I need an area to look like it's painted black metal, I think that this scrapbooking paper will do well. And then I also got some craft foam, which is what I'm going to be using to layer a little bit of detail onto my panel here. So um, I'm probably going to go ahead and take a piece of paper and sketch out exactly how big and how much I want what my panel to look like. Pretty much just want to try and recreate my own version of that panel that I was showing you on the computer um, using this as my like little droid hookup thing as sort of my like basis of scale, imagining everything else around kind of this little guy. And yeah, so I'm going to start trying to, although this is quite heavy, which is unfortunate <laughs> because that means this panel will be quite heavy. Let's see if that ends up working out. I couldn't find, I didn't look hard enough, but I couldn't find like a plastic version of this in the PVC area. I probably should have looked a little harder because obviously something like this is much more light weight. Hmm. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, you know, start layering these things and they start looking really good. Um, just automatically it starts looking like what you would expect for a Star Wars panel weirdness. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and start sketching out what I want to make. I'm going to try and make one of these panels tonight and I will walk you through it. Um, as I make progress, basically. All right, so here is my mock-up of the two panels I want to make. The way I created this mock-up, basically, which is about a foot wide and like 14 inches-ish tall. It's a little bit bigger than I thought it was going to be, but I think proportionally with this little guy, it works. So we'll see how it goes. I'm just kind of going off that image and kind of just making up as I go. Um, but you can see it's very similar to that image um, from earlier. Um, so I just started around this and kind of looked at that image and saw how much the spacing was around their little circle and kind of just eyeballed around that um, and then just cut this out of paper. This one is the same. They're both 10 inches tall. These are little squares of the um, plexiglass that I very crudely tried to make into squares. Um, so I was imagining that I will have two more of those down here, but I'm not exactly positive how I'm going to make that work yet. Um, but I thought this little metal plate looked good up here. I'm going to color these um, probably blue or something or white or I don't know haven't decided yet and then I'm going to create a little grate to go over these and this is all just like different levels of foam on the foam core so that's kind of the big main panel here this is a uh, lid for acrylic paint and then another one of those little greeblies I bought today but I think once it's painted up it will look more like a droid socket again and then this is going to be the second panel here I'm just going to use these little lego looking greebly things that I found today at the hardware store and I'm just going to cut out um, these panels here to put something either reflective or again maybe I'll put plexi behind like frosted and then try and put some sort of a light source behind that. We'll see how all this goes um, but now I'm going to go ahead and try and cut out some of these pieces at least maybe half of this. Maybe I'll start with this one because it'll be easier. Cut this out of foam core, cut these out of foam and glue that together hopefully with either the liquid cement or the, uh, what is this called? Rubber cement <laughs> or the tacky glue. I'm not really sure which glue is best for what material here, but we're going to be trialing and airing the situation. Um, and so, yeah, I'm going to try and start maybe with that one because it'll be easier um, and see how it goes. So I wanted to do for this smaller panel, I think I'm going to cut these sections out of the foam core and then put something behind all of that. Um, and I wanted to use the plexi, so I've cut the plexiglass down to that size. And then I found some, these are photography gels for putting over lights. Um, I found some of those. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a blue one, which is what I originally wanted, but I will go ahead and just do red. Um, 
you know, maybe it's red for locked, blue for unlocked for the door. Or maybe it's red alert, the Empire has landed, I don't know. Um, so I will go ahead and use that transparent um, and then pop this all behind this whole thing so that that is recessed underneath. Um, I'm going to have to try and figure out, I probably should make a paper template to cut this gray here. It's going to be foam on here. Um, this craft foam, which is what I've been doing here. Um, I just cut this little section here and I cut out circles so that I could fit my little greebly things into that. So that worked pretty well here. I probably will end up putting this and those maybe, well maybe I'll leave these gray, but this probably will be silver in the end here. Um, but now I have to figure out these, this is a little bit, tiny bit bigger than this, or wider than this is, so I'm going to have to re-figure out how to draw my bean <laughs> shapes, these little, I don't know, I guess rounded rectangles in here, and then I will cut out the piece of foam for that as well, and then I can cut these sections out of this foam core too, because I want it to be recessed even further inside, and then this piece of foam is eventually going to be painted, painted black. I'm not sure if you can use spray paint on foam core, but I guess I'll look that up first before I try it. I do need to spray paint this as well. This is a um, Han Solo blaster toy. Um, I just dremeled out. These uh, holes weren't actually drilled in here, so I just used a Dremel tool to drill those out. And if you were to look close, you would notice they're not very perfect because I'd never used a Dremel tool before. So, you know, why not? Um, but I'm going to paint this whole thing, spray paint this, this matte black as well, and then I'll highlight that with some metallic paint. Um, I just have this on a dowel for painting it. This is something I just saw on, uh, saw Adam Savage do on Tested before, or have seen on that channel, and it seemed like a good way to be able to move this around without having to touch it while it's being spray painted. So I'm going to do matte black spray paint on this guy as well. But for now, I'm going to keep working on this and try and cut out that piece of foam for this side too here. I'll tell you, this thing is not in any way, shape, or form perfect or like, you know, crisp, but from far away, I think it's going to work super well. I definitely think the, um, I cut some of the aluminum tape here into like small strip piping. And I definitely think that this piping really made this like work for some reason. I don't know. Really, And then of course, like a little bit of weathering on there, but like, you know, Star Wars panel panely thing. Hopefully I'll be able to figure out how to put lights behind that. We'll have to see, but fun, fun, fun. Um, these Greedleys I painted silver turned out really cool. Um, these little cap things for pipes or whatever the heck they're from. I'm just weathering a few bolts here to possibly use either on this or something else. I think if I can't figure out lights, I will put this silver paper, like reflective paper behind this. Um, so at least it will like reflect back if lights flash at it. Um, but that's my, I think this will be like the top panel. It'll be above the other one. And I have started the other one. It's down in here. Um, but I have a lot to do on that one still. I was doing some test painting today. I also, um, did a base coat on, uh, the blaster here, which is drying on a dowel. Um, I might hit this with silver and detailing and weathering and paint the handle or the grip rather, um, brown today, but we'll have to see. I might not get to that today because I actually have to hem, this is a skirt sitting here, hem this long, long hem on this full length black circle skirt that is chilling here waiting for me to come back after dinner and hem it by hand. But before then I was just doing a little bit more work on my panels. I think I'm going to try and get some paint done on the other one here. I'm kind of sad I only get to make two of these to be honest. So I went to Home Depot and got some insulation foam. This is pink insulation foam from the Home Depot. It's back in the lumber section. The three big panels here are half inch thick. This one for the archway is two inch thick. The two inch is more expensive than the half inch, um, but I wanted that thicker stone, hewn stone look here for that, or poured concrete really. And then this is a piece of regular styrofoam that is the same kind I used to make the trimmed out boxes last, last summer that I was cutting that panel out of. This was my original sketch design idea. Here are my panels waiting to go onto the wall here. Once they were all finished up, I think that metallic tape really added a layer of helping these look less 
crafty, which they definitely look crafty, but that's gonna be okay. So here is once I got the main pieces of foam all cut, and then to glue them together, I used something called Glidden Gripper. I actually just looked up on YouTube best paint or um, best glue for foam, and this one seemed to win out. So I'll put the video of the lady reviewing the glues in the description because she did a great job and helped me decide to get Glidden Gripper. So I have that painted on here in between the pieces of foam, and then I have things weighing down the pieces so that they will stick, and I let this dry overnight for about 12 hours, really. And then the next day I started painting. So you can see this first piece has its first uh, couple of coats of the color. I think it's like seriously sand or something. I do wish I had gone one shade darker with this paint, but whatever. So here's the set um, in pieces as I started sponging on a little bit of distressing. That's just done with a um, like natural sea sponge and paint. And these illustrations show how the three panels like fit together. I didn't glue them together, but they do just slide together and then hold themselves quite well. So that first panel just has that overlapping section where the cutouts are. Then the second panel has that little buttress kind of thing. That's what I'm calling it. <laughs> it's not a flying buttress, but it's a little wedge buttress um, there on the edge that holds it over that. So that kind of seam, that first seam between one and two clicks together quite well. And then two has that arch which overhangs over three here, which is just a blank panel. But eventually I did, of course, glue the um, like door panel droid hookup situation, although it's much too tall for a droid, so maybe a vertical droid, but not a astromech. Um, but three is just quite plain and it slides underneath two there, and that kind of holds them in place over my usual set, which you can see is here in the background, still painted for Gryffindor, hiding underneath there. And I do already have the tarp down here too, which I'm going to put sand on eventually, but I'm using to protect the flooring from paint at this point. And I really did just take the seriously sand color, the same background color, mix in a little bit of brown paint to create this slightly darker shade that I just sponged on with the sponge. Um, and, you know, it looks better from far away like this. Up close, I wasn't super, super happy with how this turned out, really. So hopefully it works for you guys in the end. And then the gray for the door, I actually, is just a random can of paint I found in our garage. I think it was from my brother's bedroom one year. Um, but I didn't, I saved a little bit of money there by scavenging paint from our garage. Here it is going together a little bit more. Started to distressing on the bottom and everything. That's done with some watered down, just a craft acrylic. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but yeah, here's the set starting to take shape. And I'm like, oh good, this might actually work. Oh my, is what I'm thinking at this time. And here she is all painted. And of course, I'm still missing that fourth wall on the end there because I decided I didn't want to shoot straight on. I kind of wanted to shoot at an angle if possible. So I took the extra foam I had after doing this much and built a fourth little wall to put on the edge there. Luckily, it's not too expensive to do that. And here's the set with the lights on, ready for me to stand and repeat. I have got all my accessories laid out here so that I can grab them as I go. And then here are all the clothes ready. Um, I keep a checklist next to me and all the shoes. Uh, I keep a checklist next to me of what each outfit, like what I have planned for each outfit. And then I have it hanging on the rack in order so that I can go ahead and shoot all the looks basically. Hello there, here I am on the or standing in front of the finished set with a lovely ring light on here, which I don't know if that's helping. I tried to do some fun makeup today and I'm wearing one of my old um, first Star Wars themed projects that I ever did. This is actually one of my little kimono sleeved button back blouses, but in a novelty Star Wars cotton from Joann's that I made a couple of years ago. I'll put the blog post to this, talking about this top in the description below. Sorry about the noise upstairs. People are home, of course, because I live with my family. For those of you who don't know, um, this is my family's basement where I build these crazy things. Um, and so people upstairs are making noise, but we're gonna go ahead and have a little tour of the set anyhow, and then I'll show you some details of some of the items I don't have individual sewing videos coming up for. The Luke Skywalker Return of the Jedi jacket, dress, and the um, galaxy skirt. I will have individual sewing videos coming up for here on the channel, but the other stuff I made for this video, I'll just go over quickly because I didn't do behind the scenes video tutorial pattern drafting stuff for those. So I'll go into those things a little bit in this video. But first of all, here's the set behind me. Um, I have this fourth wall here, which I don't normally have here on set. I'm gonna actually flip the camera around so I can do this a little bit better. So right now I'm standing where I normally put my camera. So you, normally when I'm shooting on this set, I'm shooting straight on. Um, behind this whole thing are my paneled sort of wainscoting-ish walls that I've been using in a lot of my videos this fall. Um, that's what's underneath this set is all on top of that. This is a double layered thick canvas tarp that is over my like hardwood flooring sort of section of my set here. Um, and then that is about 20 pounds of play sand and some gravel from the Home Depot. Ooh, our fan down here turned off so you can hear me a little bit better now. So that is about 20 pounds of 
clay sand spread over that tarp there. No, I don't know exactly how I'm gonna clean that up without making a total mess. I assume I can just pick the tarps up from each direction and like pour the sand into a couple of buckets like that. That's what I'm hoping basically. But yeah, this is just actually, you know, play sand on a tarp with some gravel. Um, so, you know, nice and messy, but I was like, what am I gonna do for the freaking floor for this? And I didn't wanna do like pavers or anything super heavy. Um, so I thought about painting a tarp, but then I was like, just sand is like $4 for a 50 pound pack. So I just bought a load of sand. Um, but so normally I shoot straight on like this, but this time I knew I, if I could, I wanted to do something a little different and try and create another wall here so I could have a corner and be able to shoot from, here's the tripod, over here. Now, in an ideal world, I could have done, like framed it like that, I guess, and so that no edges would be seen, but I needed more room to stand Ooh, down here in front of the door. So in post-production on that video, I did actually extend this corner up here a little bit because it clipped out a little bit there. I extended this edge, which you can really tell now that you'll be able to look for it, that I was messing with this edge to extend the set a little bit there. And then I extended it a little bit down here and then on the floor as well. There's some of the close-up clips um, where I'm trying to fill in the floor, but the skirt, like when I twirl, gets cut off or my hand gets cut off a little bit here because I'm filling in that sand, which is unfortunate, but what are you gonna do? You know, these are the limitations that I'm working with. So again, these, I have uh, basically three theater flats is that wall back there. And so these are three pieces of insulation foam from the hardware store. And then what I did for this last panel, this is quite obviously the cutout from inside this last panel. So it's three panels of half inch foam, one panel of two inch that I cut this arch out of. And then the inside of that arch is over there now. And then I have three pieces, well, four pieces of this styrofoam that I use, which is also what this is done out of. Um, and what the trim on my boxes from the summer is done out of. Um, so I just put styrofoam behind that guy, kind of bulked it out to make a fourth wall. It's not very stable. You wouldn't want to run into it. Um, neither are my wall walls either, to be honest. Um, so I have those three walls that kind of click together. They're not glued together in any way. They're just held together by function of this overlapping and this overlapping and that overlapping. And then this guy's just really just leaned there. And then <laughs> thank you for gravity helping out. And then this corner is a little bit gaped and that's part of the reason I have my little box crate and jerry cans there. Um, but this is, you know, the set as it is finished. Uh, you know, if I had more time, I, it would look even better, but time constraints, you guys, and money constraints as well. So this is, you know, you don't wanna, you know, bankrupt yourself entirely, which I say, although I totally have. Um, so some more details here. I have that little electrical box up there that really you don't see in the video, but this is just, again, that styrofoam piece. I tried to make it a little bit grimy inside of there so that it looked like if like dirt and grime, acid rain had been falling on it, that it would have kind of collected in the corners and like fallen down and stuff like that. This piece I ended up carving out like a, like a blaster had hit it or like a bullet hole kind of. That's what I was going for there. Um, but mostly I just like didn't worry about if the foam pieces got chipped or nicked or bruised in any way. I kind of left that in and then I did carve out a couple of corners and nick in some extra spots with a utility knife, especially like here, you can see these scrapes. I thought like if people were like, dragging their speeder or like a bike or crates along this street or in front of this door that it might've scraped the stone over the years. So I have some of those scrapes in there. Then I have my little drain <laughs> things that I bought in the drain section at Home Depot and the vent that looks like quite installed. In fact, I did screw this into the foam. I was like, how am I going to glue that on there? And I just ended up screwing it into the foam, which worked pretty well. And I'm pretty sure I could strip those screws out of the foam really quickly, but it worked for now. Um, and then of course I was trying to make this look like the corner of the wall on the road here by putting a little bit of gravel there where it would kind of collect. If you were coming along this road all the time, bits of gravel and stuff would be flicked up against the house and then kind of settle down there. I figured they don't do a lot of sweet street sweeping wherever this is in the galaxy. Uh, you know, probably not really concerned with that kind of thing. Um, some more like splashes of mud here from again, things driving by or just collect over the years or whatever. And then we have our arch here again, some, uh, I did make a mistake on this as well. You can kind of tell up here still <laughs> where this foam, um, the half inch thick foam, has like a sheet, uh, like a protective 
like almost like a film that you get like on a new phone where you have to peel it off or like on a mirror and you peel off a little plastic layer of foam or of uh, plastic plastic layer of plastic wow doing well today guys um you peel off that like kind of plastic layer on that and that's what everything's printed on but this thick two inch foam it's like the information about the foam is printed directly on the foam and it kind of has a texture to it so you could almost like read the words and so i had to fix that and so i just did these kind of claw-ish marks over the most readable bits of the foam and then try to distress it extra in those spots so you couldn't tell that it actually says something you know here you can kind of see where it's still depressed and like there was a word right here so i should have used the other side of this foam i just was working quickly and didn't realize um for our little door here these are just again pieces of styrofoam cut to shape here the way i figured out how like what size i needed to cut all this with like three inches in between three inches here three inches here three inches between the panels and the sides is I actually just like created a rectangle that was this exact size it's like you know 34 inches across 74 inches tall or whatever it is in photoshop and then played with the shapes inside of that like using a photoshop image that was that size in inches um so i could play around the sizes in photoshop and then i would know what to make paper patterns for and cut out of the foam so that's what i did with that you can see here is the seam of this panel being slid underneath the arch to hold itself in there this one and this one also have um velcro on the back to hold that panel up because it wants to hold itself back for whatever reason so i have some velcro in there so that this is still removable because and if i had glued all these pieces together um then it would be nearly impossible to like store this set and use it again because it's huge it's 12 feet long or wide rather and seven and a half feet tall i want to be able to like store it over there in a different place um also yes this is the mess that happens when you're making lookbooks all the time um, but I want to be able to lean these up against the wall. I don't want to get rid of them, obviously, after I spent money and lots of time making this set. I want to be able to use this set again in the future, spruce it up, or change the door, maybe, and use it again for future cosplay or sewing or Star Wars projects when needed, basically. Um, then we have our panels that I showed you how I made in earlier in this video. Um, they did, you know, I glued them here on the wall, and then I did end up distressing them a little bit more so they, they got a little bit dirtier. Um, a lot of this distressing, which you can tell, most of it's done with like a sponge, but a lot of it is also done with a spray bottle. So you just kind of mix up a loose, like a watery version of the color you'd like. And then I just sprayed it on there. And then kind of first layer I sprayed it on, took a paper towel that was like scrunched up in my hand and dabbed that over it and just kind of got more of a yellowy tinge out of that. And then I sprayed it again. And then down here on the bottom, I really didn't care about it looking like spray because I figured again, it's from mud being tracked down this street or whatever. So it really would just look like spray up around here. So I just sprayed that from a spray bottle all the way down. Tried to um, mop up any of the drips so it wasn't as drippy for most of it. But And the spray too does offer like you the ability to make it quite a gradient, which is good. And of course, up close, it looks like a spray bottle. But from far away where the camera was, it's less noticeable. This fourth panel is the last one I did. And I did these I distressed while they were already in place. This one I distressed while it was laying flat. Um, because it was the night before I was shooting the video, so I just wanted to quickly do this one. And I didn't have time, and I didn't want to like spray and distress in front of my mom's nice curtains here and stuff like that and get paint anywhere. So I wanted to finish this panel while it was laying down on top of a tarp and then put it into place once it was dry. So that's how that one worked out. And so that's one that doesn't match perfectly with the others. Even though the paints are the same, I went a little heavy handed on this compared to this. So it doesn't match perfectly, but what are you gonna do, you know? So there's this last panel up here again. Another one of those vents with a little spray paint on it. Uh, these these greeblies are, again, just ones I showed you that I picked up at Home Depot. This actually is the piece of plastic that the X-Acto knife came in, and I just spray painted the inside of that silver. I got that trick from a channel here on YouTube called Smuggler's Room. The Smuggler's Room, I think it is. I'll put their link in the description. Um, this guy is creating an amazing basement, basically. Um, very Star Wars set inspired whole like basement Millennium Falcon build out basically and his videos were really cool and inspiring for when I was working on this project so I'll put his link in the description below um, much more thorough and um, like hardy work that he's doing because he wants it to last and me I didn't need this to be super durable obviously yes I have had someone ask if this is a portal cube um, from the video game portal I have not played portal and this is actually like based off of I'll put try and put an image here from Star Wars Rebels hopefully they won't get mad at me of then moving some crates around that inspired me to make this little HelloFresh box is what that is into 
one of these grates. Again, that's just styrofoam, half inch styrofoam, cut out into the shapes I wanted and glued on there and then painted it all gray and ended up distressing it a little bit so it looked a little bit better and looked like it fit in a little bit more. These are brand new like jerry cans or gasoline cans that I bought on Amazon for my adventure style video. I'll put a link to, to my adventure style lookbook here in case you guys haven't seen it because it would really help me out if you did go give that one a watch. It was kind of the first of my super themed lookbooks like this. But I wanted to use these again, of course, because I don't need to use them for gasoline, but uh, I would like to reuse the props that I invest in here. So here they are again, even though they are not technically Star Wars themed, I figured people move fuel around in the different galaxies. So here we go. We have some fuel tanks up here as well. But yeah, here's the, uh, the set as it is. It's basically all just foam and paint. And this actually, you know, while expensive, isn't crazy expensive to make if you wanted to make like a Star Wars short film or something like that and needed to make a small room like this. The half inch sheets, they come four by eight. Mine have been cut down a little bit because the walls in here are not eight, actually eight feet tall. So mine are like seven and a half feet tall. But these sheets are $13 each or $14 each, I think, for the half inch. I would have preferred to use one, honestly, but those were 19 and I was trying to save dollars anywhere I could. So those are $13 each, the two inch, Thick foam is the expensive stuff. That is $33 a sheet, but again, worth it, I think, for the look. Um, you could, of course, use sections of one of these and glue them together to create that kind of thing, but look, sounds like a hassle. So I just went ahead and bought the one sheet of the expensive foam. And this, because again, it comes in four feet by eight feet, the bit I took off the top is what became this in the end. So um, I was able to use another element of it. Um, that wasn't even in my original design, but I quite like it. And it helps buttress the whole set together. So that's useful as well. So yeah, that is the set area all broken down for you. Um, what kind of lighting I'm using here? I have a soft box here, and then I had another one over here behind me, um, which is where near the camera is. And then I have my ring light here as well. I didn't actually have this one on when I filmed the video. I thought I would use it, but I ended up just doing light from this direction. And then of course these lights ahead um, on top, I mean, I had that turned off, so I didn't, uh, I kind of would, would have liked to have bought special colored lighting for this, but I didn't have time to like get it here in time by the time I thought of that. So just using my regular old lighting that I normally use down here. This is a like rec room down here. Like the basement is supposed to be, oh, we don't have many parties luckily. Um, so this is actually a pool table that the cover is on, which is kind of my staging area. This is what the jewelry accessories nonsense looks like after I film a video, it's called kind of just sitting here, but I can go through some of the jewelry with you. There's some of my favorite like brutalist or more modernist looking mid-century jewelry. I think this one is a Napier piece. So that's Napier. This one's a Trafari, I think. I love this one. I have seen a gold one online before too, and I'm like, ooh, I want both, but I just think that looks so cool. Um, this is a little like 30s base metal thing. Um, just some different earrings. This is an 80s bracelet that's really fun. I really like this brutalist one that's got both silver and gold going on. Just cuff bracelets, different pieces of jewelry down here that I was using for this. Stuff I've collected over the years. This is another like 70s or 80s necklace that I thought looked very, something like something Princess Leia would wear. She tends to wear kind of like bulkier silver jewelry, I think, but yeah, this is gold winner. This one, I don't think made it into the video, but it's very fun as well, like cheese or something. This one, is a gift from a family member. And again, has that kind of modern look. So I kind of just brought down a selection of my more modernist stuff. This is a brooch I still haven't worn yet that I really like as well. Quite fun, kind of deco looking. This one's I think from the 80s maybe, I'm not really quite sure. Um, then I have my really janky little lightsaber prop that I made with some PVC parts and spray paint, which scratches off really easily. And then just a D-ring hot glued on there real quick. I just wanted something super fast and cheap. Of course, I'd love to have some nice um, lightsaber props one day, maybe build one or buy one when I actually do get to go to the real Galaxy's Edge sometime. But this was my very quick, only doing one Jedi look anyway, lightsaber prop here. This got kind of enough room for two hands if I wanted to. Um, then I also have the oh, DL-44 sitting here still. Um, this is supposed to be like Han Solo's gun, but the scope is done in a really odd way on this toy, but again, it's supposed to be a toy, not supposed to be a prop replica, really. Um, still has the still has the information on here. But I spray painted this black, as you saw. Um, I did a little bit of brown acrylic down here. I imagine this is your confirmed Stormtrooper kills or something. 
Um, and then most of the highlighting done on this, like all this area where it looks like the paint has like chipped off or worn away, is actually silver Sharpie. And I just ran it along the edges and like drew on a couple of chips because that was gonna be fastest and easiest. I was finding that the paints I had, the silver paints I had available, when I like sheared them out or smudged them, they looked too sparkly and I didn't want a glittery blaster. So I ended up using a silver Sharpie and that really worked really well. So I just went over the areas and then like wiped my finger across it while the paint of the Sharpie was still wet and smeared it a little bit. But most of the distressing on this is done with silver Sharpie. So there's, there's that. Um, I think if you put batteries in this, it does make a blaster noise, but I was not concerned with that kind of nonsense. I just wanted it to have the look for that one look again. Um, you know, just spending time and money on a prop that will be only in 30 seconds of the video. Sounds like something I would do, honestly. Um, by the time I'm done shooting one of these videos where I have like multiple looks like this, like 12 looks, 12 or 13 I think I did for this video. Um, some of my videos have like 16 looks and I've decided to cut back because it's super tiring for me and also the video just ends up a little too long and People start to get bored, I think, of the outfits after a while. Um, you can let me know if I'm wrong and you would like to have more outfits always, but um, might have to shoot things in two days if I do that that way because who, after all this, this is what it looks like, kind of a mess. As far as some of the clothes that I won't have separate videos for, again, I will have the Luke Skywalker inspired dress and the galaxy skirt um, as separate individual videos coming up soon here on the channel. So hopefully you are excited to see those. But um, a couple other projects I made for this in particular, um, starting with this little rebel cropped jackety thing. Um, I didn't bother doing <laughs> the sleeves nicely, as you can see. I just, they are aligned, but it's just surged and stitched in there because I needed quick in this uh, instance, you guys. So this was an old Edwardian skirt um, that I had in my stash. I didn't really have the budget to buy more twill for this, so I ended up cutting apart an old Edwardian skirt to make this, um, which worked out quite well because this brown twill is something I use all the time. And I can wear this jacket with like the brown twill pencil skirt that I have out of the same fabric in my closet. So that's nice if I want to do a more subtle <laughs> rebel look sometime with a pencil skirt. Um, but this just has these little faux, they don't, they're not actually functional pockets here on the front with some top stitching over the like chest area, curved neckline. Um, down the sleeves, I did do this additional deta detailing that seems to be on a lot of Rebel jackets to have stripes down the center of the sleeve. This is actually just bi uh, double fold bias tape. So here's this side just has the bias tape laid out uh, on top. And this side I have it inset in with more top stitching. And then this is more sections of bias tape. I just measured and laid them all out, basted that down, and then sewed that into this sleeve. Basically, that's how that worked out. Um, this one, this is just my basic bodice block. Um, and then I came up, I think a half inch from the waist, uh, not much, um, just so that it was a little bit cropped and I didn't worry about adding a plethum or anything. I wanted it to be a little shrugged kind of style. Um, but I did move the waist dart into two darts. That's the only real change I made on this. This is just, you know, regular neckline, nothing really changed on that except for adding of the pockets. And again, you just make rectangles. This, if you folded this out, it would just be a rectangle. And then I just top stitched it down and then tacked it a little bit into place. So this is not officially the way patch pockets are normally done, but I just wanted them for looks, not for fashion. And then I just fully lined this in this polyester lining that was laying around in my stash still. And that's this little guy. Um, if you would really like to see how to make one of these, um, if you're super interested in it, uh, let me know. And then I could do a video on this in the future and make a nicer version for myself. I wouldn't mind having one. So if it's something you're super interested in, let me know in the comments. As for the sort of linen uh, traditional Obi-Wan almost or Qui-Gon style Jedi outfit. Um, that, this outfit here is actually just my, the same Bolero suit as this. So I'll put an image of this suit without its Jedi modifications here. So this little 30s, 40s suit, um, I've worn it a lot of times in many of my lookbooks here on the channel, but all I did was make a Obi belt here. So just a thick belt. There's a little bit of interfacing in there. And then um, I made it a little bit longer than 30 inches to go all the way around. And then I just sewed some cotton like muslin-y gauze into the ends that I could wrap around multiple times um, to kind of create this corseted or obi belt situation. And then this obi is worn over these Jedi wraps as well. So this just has a little, if I can get my hanger to go away. Here's the belt I used for this look also. It's just a 
belt from Banana Republic that I've had for a long time. So I finally found a use for that because I I've never really worn it since I bought it, but I'm glad now that I have it because it worked well for this look. Um, but these are the little Jedi like tabard hanging portions that you see on many Jedi costumes, um, whether it's background characters or main characters. They don't tend to go past the waist in the back. So this is actually a waistband tie. So this ties around, if you imagine this is your back here, this is the back of your waist, this ties around your waist. These come back over your back and then down over your shoulder and then hang in the front and get tied underneath the OB as well. So that's what's going on with this. This is just, you know, two pieces of fabric sewn into a rectangle and then ironed and then sewn to a rather rough little waistband to tie on. But um, this did, this only took me a couple hours to like throw it together, you know? I just chose like, I think it was six and a half inches wide and uh, hope for the best really with this. So that worked out really well. Just buying some of the same fabric that that suit was made out of, making the tabardy hanging bits and an OB to match. And it ended up looking like, you know, my 19, like my late thirties, my World War II version of a, you know, Jedi. I don't know where the Jedi were fighting during World War II. Maybe they were in North Africa. And that's why we have this nice linen. It's very anachronistic, but again, so was this whole video. So that's fine. And then the last item I wanted to talk about in this video, um, just because I figure people will ask questions about it, is this little bolero jacket here that you see me wearing. This is actually one of Gretchen Hirsch, uh, Gertie, Designs by Gertie or whatever her fabric line is called, with Joann's back when she was doing a line with Fabric Traditions at Joann's. There's brocade was part of her line. Um, I actually still have some of the gray in my stash, but I made a dress out of the blue and then this bolero out of it. Um, and then I did all this lace applique and bead and sequin work on this guy. Um, the roses are actually quite, or like camellias or whatever these look like most, are actually quite fun because they're kind of raised and that's just done by having a bead on the top and the bottom of the sequin as you go around. But there's all just different kinds of sequins on here, including these like holographic black sequins, which are amazing. Um, those are from, most of these sequins are from a website called Cartwright's Sequins, which I again will link in the description below. And good luck to you because if you like doing embroidery, sequins, crafting, they have the coolest and best widest selection of sequins I've ever seen and they're not that expensive. So good job uh, ordering from them today. I know you weren't expecting to do that, but you're welcome. A um, little bit of beads going on. Mostly I just like follow the pattern of this lace. I made this a couple years ago um, or a few years ago now, but I just think it's very fun and it's very nice with the matching blue dress, um, which you may end up, end up seeing later in another more blue themed lookbook, if you can guess what that one will be. This is just a little kimono sleeved cropped bolero again. This one's lined in some black rayon lining. Um, here's the front for you. That's not what that looks like. What's funny about this bolero and also the galaxy skirt that I'll talk about in a video soon is that normally when you have couture or beaded things, beaded to this level, I should say, um, that kind of work is done with a tambour hook, which looks like this on a, like a mesh fabric on a loom or like a um, frame. And I do know how to do tambour embroidery. I took a class when I was studying abroad, luckily enough, I was lucky to take a class, I should say. Um, but I don't have a good frame for that kind of thing. And it's hard to get, like, I, it's not easy for me to get silk organza, which is usually what that kind of embroidery is done on when doing appliques. And I don't have a frame for it. So I can't really do tambour embroidery in this studio. So all of these are sewn on by hand. Um, all of these, every sequin on the big galaxy skirt, it's all sewn on by hand, which God knows how many beads and sequins are on this thing. But clearly I was feeling insane when I made this. I don't, I mean, even all this black you can see is sewn with tiny, tiny sequins. And that is all done by me by hand because I, uh, apparently, you know, I needed, I really needed like a good hefty project when I made this a couple years ago. I had just quit a job that was very, very stressful and I was kind of finding my way back into my creativity and like wanted to do an over the top project. And that's, this is what came out of that. Um, there actually is a first version, funny enough, sitting right here of a galaxy skirt that I made after this. This was kind of while I was waiting for materials to arrive from the first galaxy skirt I ever made. I made this instead, which is, this is like a wait in between project. Like I'm, again, maybe I'm, a little bonkers, but what are you gonna do? Um, but this actually right here, you can see how messy the room still is. Um, this actually is the first ever like galaxy skirt I made. 
Um, this one I have a couple of blog posts on. I wore it in front of the Opera Garnier in Paris when I went to Paris last. Um, it was something I wanted to make special to wear when I was there to have pictures on my blog. The pictures aren't that great. Um, and the skirt didn't turn out exactly how I wanted, but it definitely taught me what and what not to do for making a galaxy inspired skirt like this. So that came in handy when I made this next one. But this one I actually like painted a lot of the galaxies on and like painted some tool. So I'll link the blog posts where I talk about this skirt below as well. Although God knows there's probably typos because I haven't looked at those posts in years. That was like 2016 or 2017, I don't remember. Um, but it was the same year I made this guy. So, you know, sometimes I've been sewing a long time, guys. So a lot of the times people will be like, I can't believe how much you made for this video. And it's like, usually for each video, I'll only make like four ish new projects, sewing projects for each of my like themed lookbooks. Um, and then the rest I just pull from my closet. So like this was already upstairs in my closet. I just knew it would kind of give a good Padme level of detail that I wanted for that outfit. So I just pulled it to use for this video. So, and things like the white sateen dress already was in my closet. Um, the red wrap dress, things like that are already the uh, linen suit that matches these Jedi wraps. So I just pulled those from my closet and then tried to adapt them into a Star Wars-ish outfit, basically. That's how that went down. But uh, hopefully all that rambling is somewhat interesting to you, or at least you liked checking out the embroidery on this guy. So those are my Star Wars projects. Um, again, I will have a separate couple of videos on the Luke Skywalker-inspired Return of the Jedi, Return of the Jedi-inspired dress, the black sateen with the high collar and the white turn back. I will have a couple of videos coming up on that dress soon. I was really excited about that project. That was the one I planned to do from the beginning when I first had the idea to do this video back in early fall. Um, so I'll talk about that more in that video or in those videos rather, because I'm going to break it up into a couple. And then I do have a video on the galaxy skirt coming soon for you all as well. Um, because, you know, I figured I was going to be making a lot of stuff for this and it was the holidays, so I might as well film some of it and get a few more videos out of it, you know, trying to be clever and use my time well there, even though, of course, I was down to the wire filming this video because I did want to get it up for the same day as the film came out. Um, I got it up on the Friday that the film was officially released, which I'm counting as having made it to that deadline. I mean, I would have preferred to have it up on Thursday, but I had to finish hand sewing all those sequins onto the skirt, so I needed an extra day. What are you going to do? Now, I know I'm probably going to miss details or skip over things that you find very important. Um, I considered filming myself painting the set or like doing the faux finishing at least, but I was in like paint stained, sad, grungy pajamas and I had no makeup on and was on a rush in a rush. So I, I didn't end up setting the camera up to film that. So you'll have to forgive me. Just trust me. I just took a sponge and I just did this, you know, all over until I liked what it looked like. Um, sometimes I, if it was coming, the paint was coming out too strong, I would take water onto the sponge, wring it out and kind of dilute it down a little bit. But really it's just a combination of both the latex house paint stuff and then also acrylic craft paint that I had laying around. So if you really want me to show, like I'll make a fake panel, like a small one and show you the exact technique if you really are interested. Um, but usually videos like that don't do very well on the channel. So let me know if you're like desperate to see my faux painting skills or lack thereof. Um, I did, however, ask you all for some questions about the set, again, because I'm going to be missing stuff, on Instagram. So here is what some of you have asked. Um, first question here from Cabin Richmond says, how long things took you to complete? And it's hard to say because I was working on both the set and the projects at the same time. So like the Rebel Jacket, I did that in a day. Um, the Luke Skywalker dress, I will again talk about more when I'm doing that. That, I took like a day to pattern it and then two days to make it. Um, and that is because I was filming at the same time too. So I could have maybe done it faster, but I was filming that whole process for you. Um, like the beaded bolero, God knows I spent weeks on that thing. So I don't remember. It was a couple years ago. Um, the galaxy skirt took me two or three days, but like, again, off and on a couple hours on that, a couple hours on the set, a couple hours on that, a couple hours on the set. So it's hard to really say, um, the set, I bought the foam. It's, can't, it can't have been last Saturday. I think I bought the foam last Saturday and it's Sunday now after the video came out. So I built the whole set in a week. Um, I did, I was able to make those panels that uh, from the start of this video earlier than that. But as far as like the big pink foam, turning that into the set, I did that in a couple of days because that's all the time I had. So, you know, of course I would again, like to have made it nicer, but due to my time constraints, cause like I, last week I was filming the holiday lookbook that I put up. So, and like before that I was working on Gryffindor. So like they're back to back 
these lookbooks I've been doing, which is why I am now exhausted. Um, and we'll be taking some days off to just sit here and do very little more than build some cute houses in The Sims, because that's my favorite way to really, really unwind. Um, so that's what I'll be doing. Crystal G Justice asks, which outfit or outfits were the most difficult to assemble? And none of them were particularly difficult to assemble. It's just all things that take, you know, time if you're going to do them nicely. Um, so it was more just like that I was on a time crunch, not that anything was particularly hard to do. I would say like the biggest like eureka moment for me when planning the outfits for this video was thinking about how I could layer that black little turtleneck underneath things. Um, it's like a thin little Morona from like Target originally black high neck turtleneck t-shirt kind of material. Um, but it looks kind of like the shirts that are worn underneath the Stormtrooper costume. If you watch The Force Awakens, Finn, when he like starts taking off his armor, is kind of wearing a little black turtleneck underneath his armor. Um, it seems like a good like thermal underlayer for spacesuits and things like that. So it seemed to have, even though it's like, you know, a Steve Jobs turtleneck, um, it seemed to have the kind of space look once I started layering it under stuff that I was looking for. I was originally planning on wearing that black turtleneck underneath the white sateen dress as well, but I just forgot. So there's that. Life of the Party asks, what inspired you to create the long skirt with the circles and stars? Uh, mostly just because I had done that other galaxy skirt in the past before, but also a lot of um, Valentino and like McQueen and Gal Galliano like gowns from over the years where they have done any sort of kind of galaxy things on skirts. Um, it's, not, it's not an original idea for sure. Um, the idea of doing the circles came to me quite late because again, I was like, shoot, the set's almost done and I need this galaxy skirt and I don't have time. Um, I originally was going to cut like much more organic shapes and try and create very realistic looking like auroras and galaxies going on. Um, but then I realized I could just cut perfect circles and it would be a little bit more retro that way too because I was trying to combine like 40s and 50s with Star Wars. And so to do a real, really realistic gal galaxy seemed like a very Star Wars idea. To do something much more like modernist or like abstract seemed like more of a vintage idea. So it kind of worked out that that combined well, I think. Um, wasn't really the original plan, but I do like how it turned out. And that's why I decided to, I bought some other colors of tool, and but that's why I decided to use just the yellow, red, and um, blue, because it was more of like a Mondrian kind of, um, or even uh, Alexander Calder, if you've seen those mobiles. Um, kind of more of that same color palette from the late 50s, I want to say. I guess. And my art history knowledge is not the best anymore. Um, but that kind of primary color palette with the black, I decided to focus on that with the silver and gold sequins as well to help bring in the mid-century a little bit more there as well. Nerdine42 asks, maybe nobody else is curious about this, but how do you determine your budget for a video? Ugh, what an adorable question. Like I don't budget my videos very much really. It's, I mean, more, it's more like, what do I have left in my account after I pay my student loan payments? And like, that's my budget. Basically everything I make on YouTube right now, which again, not a huge amount. I'm not, I'm still living at home guys. Um, I use that to pay my student loan payments every month so that I'm not a super, super burden, just a little bit. Um, so I pay my bills and whatever left over after that, like I might buy myself a new pair of dress clips or a color pop palette or something if I'm feeling weak, but most of that I just pour right back into the channel, um, because I can't help myself, but buy fabric and paint and foam. So really my budget is less determined beforehand by like how much I want to spend on a video. It's more just like how much money do I have in my account? And then I will just drain it dry trying to make these videos. Um, you know, it's not maybe the smartest thing and I definitely don't save as much enough money. I don't save as much money as I should. I'm not the most financially stable or con like a um, smart person. Um, but right now I'm kind of, you know, hoping that this is, an investment and in worth it eventually one day. Some people make a living on YouTube. I would eventually like to be one of those people. These videos are not a smart way to do that because these videos, I mean, this one probably cost me, <laughs> what's funny is one of the most expensive things about this video were the tall cognac boots that I bought because those were like 115 bucks, uh, but I needed some tall brown boots. So that was an investment for this video. Um, the foam, I think was like about $100 for all of the pink foam the styrofoam I had bought over the summer, but that was like about $20 worth of that styrofoam. Um, you know, another $100 in Greeblies and paint, another $70 in Greeblies, and then tarp was about 30. So like, I haven't added up how much this video cost, but I want to say probably around $400, $450 to make this video. Um, probably, uh, maybe a little bit more than that because of fabric costs. Um, split up over the last six weeks, maybe. And uh, that's just basically 
like any of the money that I've made for my ad revenue, I put into that. So yeah, I, you know, didn't leave myself much of a budget for Christmas shopping here or for Black Friday, but I just put it all back into the video, hoping that one day it will pay off. Um, the video itself, however, why I'm saying this is not exactly a great financial decision or business decision is because these lookbook videos don't get very many views <laughs> compared especially to my other videos. A haul video will get twice as many views in twice as less time than these videos will. Um, so I put a ton of money and time and effort into these lookbooks because I think it's quite clear I like making them. Um, it's like a very, it's a cool creative outlet for me. I think I get to finally do the kind of behind the scenes film prop set costumey stuff that I always have been interested in and get to do like a thematic narrative arc to it even and like do the scripts and everything. And I really enjoy, um, ooh, I have a comment. I enjoy making them, but they don't do well here on the channel. A lot of you seem to like them. So thank you for commenting because that really is the only reason I can stay motivated when the views just don't come in and YouTube does not promote these videos. I've actually stopped, you'll notice in my last couple of lookbooks, I've stopped calling them lookbooks because I think people don't click on the word lookbook. I don't I think people don't like them anymore. So I've been saying like style or outfits instead of lookbook because I think people just don't click on them. And I understand like there's a lot of bad lookbooks out there, but I think I put a little, little bit of extra effort into mine. I hope you can agree. Um, so they're not like a normal lookbook in so many ways. But yeah, they don't do well on YouTube. And so I spend a lot of money on them when I shouldn't because I'm not like it's virtually at this point, the video has been up for two days, day and a half, two days. Um, and like the algorithm didn't like that I uploaded it two hours later than I should have because my computer was struggling to export it, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so like if you don't upload by a certain time, the algorithm doesn't like get it into people's sub boxes in time and the video won't do as well. It's hard to know what the algorithm wants, obviously, but um, the odds of this video making back what I spent on it at this point are very, very slim. So watch it again and share it with all, all of your friends. Thanks. <clears throat> um, Josie Gilmore asks, how did you come up with the specific characters looks? And it's more that I just uh, brainstorm lots of outfits and usually I'll like come up with maybe like 16 to 18 outfits I think might work. Then I'll try and narrow that down because if I tried to film that many, I would go mad um, because I've tried to do it before. I think for Slytherin, there's 16 outfits in that lookbook. It's too many, honestly. Um, so I try and narrow it down. And then I write the script after all the outfits are chosen. Sometimes I write the script after I've shot the video. This time I wrote the script before I shot the video, um, just how it had worked out. I spent one morning just kind of like sitting and writing the script for this. I think it took me around four-ish hours probably to write the script for this one. And like, it doesn't take that long, but mostly I'm looking up like, oh, what's another planet that starts with D? And like, I have to look it up on like Wikipedia. Um, or like, am I remembering that, you know, strange fruit from Star Wars Rebels correctly? And I like look it up to make sure that like it would work kind of in canon, things like that. But I'm just kind of writing the script around the outfits as opposed to making the outfits around the script. So the outfits come first and then I think of a scenario that that outfit might work for in. So like if it looks something a little bit more Empire, I figured that's going to be a rebel spy who's infiltrating the Empire, of course, because I'm not about that Empire life. I'm only 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 for spying, you know. So definitely the looks come first and then the kind of narrative gets built around that. Similarly, uh, Cosine, El mm, Coke, scene Ella Caro. Listen, I'm sorry. Um, asks, how do you pick your puns and alliteration? Um, I just kind of come up with it as I'm going. It's kind of, it's quite fun uh, writing these. I would like to say though that like my books, because I write novels, are nothing, they're not nearly as uh, cutesy and alliterative as my voiceovers for these are. I try and make them extra on purpose because it's like this like announcer person, you know? It's like the announcer lady in 1940s videos always says like the most random things if you watch. Um, videos that these that my lookbooks are kind of inspired by um, like the 1940s pre show or like pre film reels, where they talk about the newest fashions from, you know, Duratex nylon or like whatever the heck they're trying to advertise for that day, they have the funniest little script. So I feel free to make them as wackadoodle as I want. Um, um, and Clara, so vintage asked, how did you manage to clean up that sand? And as you can see, because I just took you on a tour, I haven't yet. So don't know yet. We'll see how it goes.
So this behind the scenes video turned out a little bit longer than I was expecting it to, but I wanted to address some of your questions that you had. Um, I wish I had thought to do that earlier because I just wanted that a few hours ago to ask for questions. I should have done that a little bit earlier, um, but hopefully this video answers some of your questions about building the set and pulling things together for this kind of lookbook video that I do here on my channel. Um, again, thank you all who have shared this video. That really does help me out a lot. Um, trying to, you know, build the channel and, uh, you know, make this into a side hustle for myself. That's why these videos where I do behind the scenes stuff are called side hustle. And it's because it's talking about the behind the scenes part of being a YouTuber, as it were. Um, although technically by the income, I am a part part time YouTuber. But as we can see, I spend many more, more than 40 hours a week on this video, that's for sure. Um, so I'm working on it, but it is super helpful when you guys share and like and comment and things like that. So thank you so much for doing that. Um, and you know, anytime you meet a new Star Wars person and you think that they might like the video, please do <laughs> share with them because uh, it's just not going to get the kind of views that uh, if, if this kind of effort would make sense if the content got the same amount of views as like, say, my thrifting videos, but like, there's no way like my uh, a thrift haul video will get this as many views as the Star Wars video has now in 48 hours. Um, no problem. Um, or like the thrifting videos will get up to 10,000 views within a month and my lookbooks never usually reach 10,000 views. So, uh, it's not about the views, obviously. I mean, if it was only about the numbers, I wouldn't make these videos, obviously. If it was only about growing my channel and making numbers and making the AdSense revenue I need to pay my bills, um, it, I wouldn't make these because it would be really stupid to do so, but I enjoy making them. I think that some of you enjoy watching them. Um, and it really is a nice creative outlet for me to be able to put them together. I like styling things. I like, again, making props and stuff. So, uh, it's not the smartest business decision to make them, but I enjoy doing so. So it's all very confusing and I am rambling again. I better just wrap it up and say, I hope you all have a very happy holidays. I will have some more side hustle and videos coming up soon to wrap up 2019 properly. Um, talk about more, a little bit about what I've been up to on a more personal level recently, as opposed to just the work for the channel um, in that video. And then I'll have a 2020 goals video coming up soon. And then the sewing videos for the projects I mentioned in this video, blah, blah, blah. Um, so all that will be coming up here on the channel soon, but I hope I have a nice break and I hope you have a nice break before that and have a very happy holidays. And I'll see you here back on the channel real soon. Bye.